Hello, today we're with Daniel Povey, and we're going to ask him to give us a quick overview about what all of the stages in the run.sh script do. Okay, so this is the LibriSpeech run.sh. If you're trying to run this and you're a beginner, you might want to try the mini LibriSpeech run.sh because it's much faster. This requires you to download a lot of data. So the bits at the top is just setting some directories about like where you're going to store the data or where you have already stored the data. So look at the variable stage equals one. That's like a bash shell variable. If you've already run some stages, you might want to increase that. You can also do run.sh minus minus stage space one. That, that will uh, set the stage to one from the command line. Then it'll start from that point. Now, so the first is the downloading data. You need a good web connection for this. Uh, once it's downloaded, stage two, uh, it's basically preparing the data in Caldi's uh, directory format that it can understand. Because, you know, LibriSpeech, like all data sets, has its own, you know, it has its own way of formatting the data. This puts it into a normalized form for Caldi. Uh, stage three, uh, local prepare dict. So it's preparing a dictionary, which is like a mapping from words to sequences of phones. So it uses a pronunciation dictionary. This is the older way that people used to do speech recognition. These days, often we don't use dictionaries, at least for English. We, uh, we automatically break the words into pieces and just have little pieces of several characters uh, be the things that we recognize. But this this uh, this is the traditional approach. Uh, so, uh, okay, prepare the dictionary, prepare lang, that's preparing the language model. And so, well, it's not just the language model, it's, it's a lang directory, which is Caldi, Caldi's way of, of putting all in one place, things like the, the uh, phone lists, the word lists, the uh, language model, and various other information about the phones, like which ones are the silence phones. Uh, stage four is creating a language model. We're not going to need this language model until quite a bit later because uh, this is for like language model rescoring with a big language model, the foregram, which is quite a big n-gram language model. Uh, stage five, uh, wait a minute. It looks like, it's looking like we already created the MFCCs. Oh no, stage five doesn't do much. It just makes some directories. Stage six is when it computes the MFCC features. MFCCs are like, you can look them up. Uh, we dump them to disk in a compressed format. Stage seven, we create some smaller data directories. This is very fast. It's just messing with some uh, file lists on disk. Uh, because we use subsets of data for the early stages. Stage eight is, is training a, a very simple system to start the alignment process. This is the kind of system people used to use, like, I guess, 30 or 40 years ago. It has just uh, monophones. So it's uh, we don't model phones in context. Each, each phone is just one phone, so there's like 40 phones. Uh, it's a GMM, HMM system, which again is like a technology from 20 or 30, maybe even more than 30 years ago now. Uh, so stage nine, we, we're using that bootstrapping of the monophone system to, uh, to align the training data. That'll enable us to do the next stage much faster. Uh, next, we train a better system with the delta and delta delta features, but Actually, that's the same as the monophone system. That also had delta and delta features. Uh, but the difference here is we're using context dependency, triphone context. So we group phones, like we count phones differently depending what the previous and next phone were because people pronounce things in like, uh, pronounce phones differently depending on what the first and the, you know, the, depending on the context. Okay, next we train an LDA plus MLOT system. These are things that uh, LDA and MLOT are two different linear transforms of the uh, 
of the features, the MFCC features. Uh, we next we train a SAT system. This is uh, this is all about speaker adaptation. We don't do a lot of speaker adaptation these days because deep neural nets don't benefit much from it. But in the GMM days, we did a lot of this speaker adaptation. Now, most the thing that you're probably mostly interested in is the very last stage of this script. Don't go there just yet. And in the end, we're going to train a neural net, but we do all of these stages before to like align the data and prepare it for the neural net training. It makes it work a little bit better than just training from scratch a neural net. I mean, it definitely doesn't justify the complexity, but we had already built all of this stuff. So, you know, because that's how we used to do speech recognition. So that's why it's all there. Uh, okay, so stage 12 train sat. Yeah, that's that's training like a, a speaker dependent system where there's like a linear transform of the features for each speaker. Stage 13, it's a this is about improving the uh the dictionary. We, like some words have more than one pronunciation in the dictionary, and this stage is all about computing pronunciations for the different uh sorry, pronunciation probabilities for the different pronunciations. Like let's say the and the, they have different probabilities. Uh, again, this is one of those things that gives us a quite small improvement. It's probably like 0 0.1, 0 0.2% and absolute, but we, we developed it before and we kind of still do it. Okay, stage 14, this is another step of aligning the data. Uh, we align 100 hours of the data this time. So. This stage seems to be training a small neural net system. This, to be honest, this is a uh, historical system that we don't use anymore. I see, I see now that stage 14 is not done by default, so we can ignore that. Okay, stage 15, we download some more data at this point because LibreSpeech has like a 100 hour subset, a 360 hour subset and a 500 hour subset. So we're just making sure that that's downloaded, the 360. We train a larger system with that. Uh, again, some of these stages are slight overkill, uh, but you know, we just kept adding to the script. If we were de designing this today, we probably wouldn't do so many separate stages. Okay, stage 16 is another, is another stage of uh, training with, the entire data. Uh, stage 17, we download the rest of the data, the 500 hours if it's not downloaded already. We make sure that we have uh, features on it. Uh, stage 18, does a quick training of the GMM system on all of the uh, all of the 1,000 hours. The reason we didn't do this before is because after a few hundred hours, GMM-based systems don't really benefit much. It won't get very much better, but it does make a big difference for the deep neural nets. They are very data hungry. In fact, these days, even a thousand hours is considered a relatively small data set. People are working with, you know, 5,000, 10,000 hours, even tens of thousands of hours. Okay, stage 19, this does some data cleaning. Now, this actually, uh, doesn't give much improvement on libre speech. This is probably not super necessary. We could maybe just uh, have skipped this stage and then we'd have to modify the run tdnn.sh to use the older non cleaned up data directories. This data cleanup can potentially be useful if your data is very dirty. But libre speech is very clean data. The transcripts and the audio match exactly. So we don't end up removing very much in the data cleanup script. Okay, so stage 20 is probably the most interesting stage. It has the most modern system. It's not 100% modern. It's maybe maybe five years ago, it was totally state of the art. These days it gives, it's a practical system because you can build real time recognition on it, which you can't do with a lot of the latest systems very easily. But so what it is, it's a neural net with a TDNN, which is the same thing as a, as a one-dimensional convolution. And it's a special thing called the factored TDNN. It's, it's just a particular neural net topology. But anyway, so we could actually go in, maybe another time we can look inside that run tdnn.sh and talk about the different stages in there. 
but that's okay. enough for this video, I think. Thank you. Bye. Bye.